Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time today to join this brief introduction to Dynalight. I'm Alan Appel. I'm the European Technical Trainer for Global Systems, and I appreciate that in the region today we we're not all native English speakers. So, um, if I can just ask you, if you look on the right-hand side of your screen. If you can please raise your hand with the little hand icon if uh, I'm going too fast. There are options which you can select uh, in one of the boxes. There's a small tip. You can uh, ask me to go slower. So click too fast or too slow. You can give me applause. You can laugh. But please raise your hand if you have any questions. Um, otherwise, I will try to keep at this pace. Now, I'm going to really talk you through um, quite a superficial level. And um, today's agenda looks like this. We're going to look at some benefits of lighting controls, a few case studies to get you, get you in the right mood. We're going to look at dynamite history, the products, how the system works. Very, very brief screenshot of the Envision project software, commissioning software and uh, some hints as to how to find out more. So if nobody has any specific questions right now, then um, I will continue. You will see in the chat section, my colleague uh, is just giving some brief rules and instructions. You can uh, put your questions in the Q&A section but not in the chat section, so these can be answered. And since I'm the only one speaking today, I will gather these questions uh, probably towards the end. If anybody wants to give me a sign that, uh, that they can hear me okay, uh, then I will get moving. Mario, I see you're online. Can you hear me? Not seeing any sign from you. I'm just looking to see if uh, anybody can give me a sign. Yes, yeah, so fantastic. Thanks very much, Costin, Anna, superb. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so we're going to start off with a few key benefits of indoor lighting controls. We have three key areas where we need to focus. We may be looking at energy saving, we may be looking at comfort, we may be looking simply at flexibility. Energy saving strategies, what might we be looking for to save energy? We might be looking to, to maintain a constant light level. So of course we're going to use sunlight. And just by applying a photocell, this will allow us to save up to 70% on our individual luminaires or 35% on a total building. We can call this daylight harvesting, daylight regulation. We can even do daylight switching with, with uh, let's say, simple switch luminaires. This will all help us to save energy virtually immediately. Another energy saving strategy might be switching our lights on when somebody's present, of course. Absence detection, switching off when nobody's present, it will save us 30% if we choose to go down this route. Another energy saving strategy might be to incorporate smart scheduling. So we put in a time clock and then we switch off full areas um, as they're required or not required. Again, this can save us 15% just by installing a time clock. Another energy saving strategy might be, I think this will appeal probably to the lighting designers present, task tuning. This is simply making sure that we have the right lighting output for the level that's required. It's very easy for all you great sales guys to, to put in a very, very good lighting design. But these days with LED technology, dimming is far more standard than it was 15, 20 years ago. It's very easy just to simply tune the lighting down to the required level, and this will give us the 20%. Whether this is because we want to just comply with legislation, 
or whether we simply want to, um, we, we just simply want to save the energy, or the customer asked for that light level, we can save energy and the lighting will always switch on at that level. Variable load shedding, this can be done in conjunction with local energy company requirements. Um, obviously, it's not available in all regions. Um, think, for example, the simplest level at home. We uh, we sometimes, if we're lucky, can switch our washing machine at night time because it's cheaper to run a washing machine. If you've got family, it all adds up by the end of the year. Another strategy we might like to think about is a comfort strategy, and that simply means um, a comfort for the occupants, giving control. It gives you more comfort but it can also save energy because if you don't apply anything automatic like a photocell or movement detector, it's down to individuals to switch the lights off. So if you're conscious about your energy, you'll switch the lights off when you leave. There are energy savings to be made. And we can also apply more sophisticated strategies for comfort. For example, when somebody's working late in the office, um, we don't want that feeling that we're working in an island where everything around us is dark. So we can have the corridor and other areas around our office linked. It might be operating at a lower light level because it can register that somebody is working in that space. It gives you a level of comfort, a level of security, and this can also save energy. So these are all very simple compass strategies that we can apply with a system of like Dynalight. Um, and it is all done in the software. And when we talk about flexibility, it, it can mean many, many things. It might mean an element of comfort, but here um, we need to ensure that when we offer a Dynalight system to our client, we can talk to other protocols or other management systems that are present in the building. So the, 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 the terminology here is integration. Lighting isn't the whole story, we know that. It's just part of the total building installation. There will be heating, there will be air conditioning, there will be ventilation, there will be blinds, there will be AV, so projectors. And, and all of these require a form of integration. So we, they need to be able to talk to each other. And whilst you, as um, selling the system to your client, won't necessarily understand the ins and outs, it's good to be aware that we have tools to integrate with these other um, these, these other languages or protocols. And I will mention this again at the end. We have software in this particular case, Envision, Pro Envision Project, to allow us to apply our design and all the changes that we wish to make are easily done in our software. When I say easily, I mean with some training. And we have we have separate curriculum courses to take you through commissioning software, which we won't cover today. Flexibility might also be the ability to measure, report and control. So we have a dashboard software which allows our client to do this. This takes us through to Dynalight specific. So we've just covered a um, very, very general requirement for a control system or consideration. And it's probably worth mentioning here that it's so important that we ask our customer what it is he wants to achieve. I've mentioned three strategies. Does he want pure energy saving? If he only wants energy saving, then that's what we have to aim for. If he, if he wants more personal control, you might want to think about maybe nicer looking wall panels, not just simply standard low cost switches. So um, the comfort factor might also be how this thing looks on the wall. Does he want the buttons to have different functions, etc.? A little bit of Dynalight background. So, in case you were not aware, Dynalight has been around for over 20 years. Uh, Philips acquired the brand in 2009. Uh, we installed over 30,000 successful projects around the world. Dynalight's based in Sydney, so much of the Marcom, a lot of the case study, will see the more sophisticated installations will of course be in Australia and Southeast Asia. But as you can see here, it doesn't matter which application you focus on, which area you work in, you'll, there will be something for everybody. And whether you're talking about public installations, work environment, recreation, learning, 
prayer, so cathedrals, churches, synagogues, authorities, all applications are covered. And of course, we like to talk about the Burj Khalifa because it is a fantastic example of how Dialyte is totally scalable in such a huge building. And of course, if you're familiar with, uh, with museums and galleries, you may know that the Rijksmuseum uh, was recently completed in Amsterdam. This is also a very, very big Dialyte project. Let's take a look at a few examples. The Star in Sydney, it's a landmark casino and hotel complex. So Dialyte was installed throughout, and you can imagine in a casino environment, a, a wide variety of different requirements. So here, for example, we have gaming, gaming floors, restaurant, lounge, guest rooms, and if you have a refurb of 870 million, you're going to have a lot of control and you're going to have some, some big demands. Here we also had a new 171 room hotel. You've got hospitality. You had to, we had to make sure that the lighting system was secure. If you're standing in a casino, the last thing you want is for your lighting to fail. And this is something that Dynalight is very, very good at. We'll come back to this. So I mentioned hospitality, whether it's restaurant, there will be standard lighting, there will be decorative lighting, there will be color, there will be um, dynamic lighting, there will be time clocks. We've got the whole thing happening here, movement detection. Um, we, we have a lot of integration as well. So as I mentioned earlier, air conditioning, door locks, AV. And we mentioned here the look and feel of the switches or the panels, as we call them. And one touch of a switch can give you welcome or good night functions from one button push. And this then creates a complete scene. One button push gives you everything you need to happen in, in an instant. Let's move to an office case study, One Shelley Street in Sydney. This one achieved a, a six star green, a green star rating, which is very, very special in Australia. Mention green star and you're thinking energy saving. So again, we had to uh, be able to speak to the uh, building management system in place. We needed pure flexibility. So different scenarios, easily reconfigurable. We had different zones. We had the need, so the energy efficiency to, over, to ensure that areas were not overlit and were switched off where nobody was present. So again, motion, light sensor, time clocks. This gives the right lighting for the people with the, with the, the desired target energy saving. Um, and again, I mentioned with time clocks, we can introduce trading and arc arouse modes where your whole building can react in a different way at a different time of the day with the same buttons. So if you think about how things are in your home, you have buttons to operate different devices. You know that if you switch this button in one direction, it goes off. You switch it in another direction, it goes on. But with Dynalite, you can program that button to do what you want. And if I want that button to act in a different way after a certain time in the evening, then I can do that simply by incorporating a time clock and doing the appropriate programming. So everything's done in the software. Once we've, we're clear about how we want our buttons to look, once we've got our lighting specified, it's just a case of knowing what the client wants to do. Moving to London, my, home, my, my hometown, uh, Europe's largest urban shopping centre. You can imagine different requirements, some overlaps here will have dynamic color changing. Energy is very, very high on the agenda. So daylight harvesting, there's lots and lots of natural lights, lots of glass. So why have all this artificial light on when people want the feeling of being outdoors in an indoor environment? Something we've not mentioned yet, very, very important for Westfield was Ethernet connection. So we had 90 different Dynet or, or Dynalite networks, which were all linked via the internet. 5,500 lighting control channels, so individual circuits all working together, all connected by the ethernet. 
So Wi-Fi, again, energy saving, flexibility, and different uh, different moods or, or, or different types of theatre, uh, depending on different times of the day. Now let's look at residential for just a moment. Dynelight started its life in the theatre business. So what you will hear mentioned a lot is the idea of uh, scenes and scene setting. And very quickly, Dynalight was used in a lot of high, um, of, of high specification homes. So for example, in this, in this, in, in this uh, home in North, uh, North Marabeen, they're looking at ease of use, functionality, willing to spend money, but they don't want technology to get in the way of their beautiful architecture. Not architecture. But it had to do a lot of things, so it didn't want to be seen, but it had to be beautiful and do everything the client wanted. So again, security, TV, audio, central heating, air conditioning, the whole lot was combined and worked together. And of course, in the home, we have, let's call it the golden tail technology. So you're combining your halogen, your fluorescent, You've got LEDs, so you've got a you've got a hundred years of technology contained in in one building, and as you can see here, in one home, 76 individual channels, so 24 dim, 20 switch. We've got 28 blinds, probably security blinds, and uh, of course fans as well. So different lighting scenes, probably at the push of one button, to change the whole atmosphere of the space. I can imagine they've probably got a nice button to create a party scene. They've got a TV scene somewhere. They've probably got a good night button that will turn all the lights off one by one when they go to bed. Perhaps it's all connected to a time clock. So the next morning, the lights come on one by one, the radio comes on in the kitchen, and perhaps, who knows, the toaster comes on, I don't know. Again, we, we talk about panels here, so this is, it was clearly important that, um, that the appearance of the panels were what the customer wanted. He wanted the place to look smart so he could show off his nice functionality to his customer, but didn't want to see what was happening behind the scenes, only that it did its job. So that's just a very small insight into the kind of thing that you can do with a Dynalite system. Now Dynalite, you've probably heard a lot about Dynalite, Dynalight forms the backbone of many of our, uh, our current projects and moving forward into the future will continue to, to, be, to be that backbone. And I think it's good to, um, to, to just be aware that whilst on the one hand it can offer everything, I mean it really is a, a nuts and bolts system. On the other hand, the, the crucial thing is to know what it is your client wants to do. So the important trio in our Dynalight workflow is it all starts with our system designer. And by this I mean our system designer, because the system designer will work closely with our, our LIAS or our lighting designer, our AV designer, etc., to create a, um, a, um, a, 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 a very, very clear plan of what the client wants to see. Only once this is clear, we can then move to the installer. So the installer will take the brief from the system designer. He will simply do the installation of the devices. As you can see here, these are what we call load controllers in a cabinet somewhere in the house or the office or the hospital. And only then, once we've checked that these devices have been installed in the right place, we can move to programming. So it's three very clearly defined steps. It's important to know with Dynalight that we operate a distributed intelligence way of working. In the old fashioned lighting control systems, probably also in anything you might use at home, you, you've, got a, you've got a brain. The brain sends out all the signals and you have slaves that do the work. Think about a simple telephone system at home. You might spend 60 euro on a phone, you have the the main phone in the lounge, and then maybe you have one or two handsets in the kitchen or in the in the uh, bedroom. If the main unit goes down, you lose all your connect all your connection, and the slave handsets are useless. 
With Dynalite, the intelligence is loaded onto the devices that are dotted around the installation. So if you have a failure, the system can, for the most part, continue to operate. And of course, you can diagnose much more quickly if you have distributed intelligence. So we don't have a central processor. We can be confident that we have a secure system. And again, when you go back to the casino in Sydney, you can imagine how, how powerful this message is uh, in, in somewhere where, where security is very, very high on the agenda. I mentioned the theatrical background and Dynalite uses preset scenes. What do I mean by preset scenes? Now, imagine going back to our example of our button. If I want to turn the lights on, I, I, I click, I make a, an electrical connection. If I want to switch off, I click the other way, I break my electrical connection. In Dynalite language, these, this on and this off are actually two scenes. One is lights on at 100%, the other one is lights off at 0%. Now, the same button could be reconfigured at a different time of the day to be lights on at 100%. And when you switch the other way, say, for example, the kid's bedtime, the off mode might be, for example, 20%. So that when you switch off, they have this very, very low ambient level of light, which may remain this way for, say, one hour, and then it may go off after an hour. And the next morning you wake up, it's back to on and off. But we can continue this theme all the way through. So imagine different lights. Close your eyes and think of your lounge. You might have lights in the ceiling. You might have some wall lights, perhaps a table light. Each of these can be, figured, can, can be configured to participate in a scene. So I say scene number one, my scene lights are off my reading lights on, my wall lights are on. Scene two might be another mixture of this. And all of these are loaded as scenes or presets in our system. And we can point different presets to each button to tell that button to carry out that preset. And by combining different presets in different rooms, we can create what we call pathways Again, go back to your home situation. You drive home, you're facing your garage. A sensor picks up a signal that you're home. It will switch on the garage lights. It will switch on the hall lights. It will switch on the kitchen lights. And you can go in without ever touching a button. But perhaps the next morning, if you did the same thing, maybe only the garage light comes on because the rest of the house doesn't need to be illuminated. So exactly the same sensor exactly the same lighting, just a different part of the day. That's a pathway. Are we, uh, are we keeping up? Am I, um, am, am I, um, clear? Put your show of hands, please. Thank you very much. I apologise if there's any vibration in the background. We've got somebody with a very large drill who's, uh, I think, drilling up through the floor and through my chair. I will continue. So, areas. We split our working space into areas. The two key terminologies in Dialyte are areas and presets. If I want to create um, a, 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 a scene in a space, I need to know A, which area it is, and I need to know which preset it is. So for example, this is the presentation area in this particular office. This presentation area is known as an area. The office next door is an area. It's possible to, to split up very large areas into sub, sub areas we would call as areas. So for example, I could have my presentation area split into one area, two areas, three areas, and I can control them individually. But I would only do this if the space was very large, or perhaps if I was looking to install some partition, some movable partitions, for which we also have a solution in Dialyte. So for example, 
if I open a partition, the system senses that the partition has been opened, and it then treats the new area, the larger area, as one. When I close the partition, a sensor knows the partition's been closed. It goes back to being two separate areas, and then the buttons on the wall act independently for those areas. So this is possible, but basically a room is an area. Now, here I have an example. I have area number two, and I have area number three. Sorry if it's a bit confusing that we have office one in area two and office two in area three, but uh, there is a good reason why area one is not chosen. This, uh, this has a different meaning in Dynalight. The black boxes you see here are our load controllers. These are the guys that control the channels. So let's just say we have some switch, some switch circuits here. Channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. And these are simply wired to two lights in each room. And each channel is also numbered. If I want to switch on area two, I would simply send a preset message saying area two, go to preset one, which in this case is 100%. If I want area three to come on, I would send a preset message to area three saying area three go to preset one. If I want to switch them off, I would send a message to area three go to preset four. It would go off. The same with area two. I want to send an off message. It is area two go to preset number four and area two would go off. So it's areas and presets. And as you can see here, we can have 255 areas per spur, we'll come to spurs in a moment or per floor, and we can actually have 255 of these channels in each area. So we can have a lot of individual channels building up our lighting scene. What are presets? Well, just take a look at this example. Dynalite has defaults. If I buy these devices off the shelf, I will have these light levels automatically loaded in my device. So this switch, I simply connect it to my network, and as an installer, I can very quickly test that everything is working. I know that if I press preset 1, I get 100%. If I press preset 4, I get 0%. And it's a kind of golden rule in Dynalite that we never touch these two presets. So golden rule number one, preset one is always 100. Golden rule number two, preset four is always zero. But anything in between can be changed. And I can extend this preset list down to 170. And if I choose to have different options, I simply say preset one, using my software, I would assign preset one to button number one. I might assign preset four for example, to button number two. So that would be on and off. Preset three might be, for example, 60%. So my preset six will be assigned to button number three. And in our software, it looks like this, a little bit like a DJ or a lighting uh, AV controllers um, or a dimmer panel. So you can see here, my high is always preset number one and my off is preset number four. Now in this case, I've chosen preset five to be my front lighting at 60% and my rear lighting at 80%. And this, folks, is a preset or a scene. I would save this preset. I can rename this preset, so I can call it, for example, TV. In the software, I apply this preset to my button. And until I make it change, until I make a change, this will always be my TV setting. So that's presets and allocating or signing presets to buttons. Scenes, well, scenes are almost endless. We can combine different areas. As I mentioned before, this is the garage idea. This is our pathway, we're coming into our garage. I combine my garage with my utility, with my hallway, with my office. This is a scene. Now, I may wish the lighting to come on all at the same time. I can apply delays so that as I, as I come to the garage, 
My lighting goes on in the garage. After two seconds, maybe my utility comes on, maybe my hallway comes on, and so on. And it's just you're limited by the, I would say, imagination, but actually by the requirements of your customer. So perhaps your job um, as an account manager is to A, ask your customer what he wants to do, but also to make him available, uh, to make him aware of what the system can do and perhaps what he would like to do more with, with better information. So if we start to look more at the topology or the, or the bigger picture of, of controls of the Dynalight network, we start off with our lighting. We need our lighting here, our efficient bed lighting. But in practice, it's going to be our fluorescent lighting, our halogen lighting, who knows, our discharge lighting, if we're still putting discharge lighting in in a few years' time. We need some load controllers. What do these do? Well, these handle the loads up here. We have a different load controller to suit all types of load. So whether it's a switched load, a dimmed load, halogen load, lead load, we have a controller to handle the load. And as time goes on, we're working to ensure that our controllers are best suited to deal with the most recent LEDs that come onto the market. We need interfaces. We have two types of interface. We have user control, which are otherwise known as buttons, the things people see and can touch and, and really can show off their, their, their space. Or we have these workhorses, these automatic devices, which sense movement or sense daylight or, or sense sound uh, these are the ones that work 24-7 and give us these energy savings. We need to think about how we will integrate with the rest of our installation. As I mentioned, it might be HVAC, the security, there are blinds, because we will have many other third-party devices or systems in our installation. And of course, we need our software. Again, I won't really cover software today but i would welcome you to come to one of my software trainings excuse me and finally our dynet network our dynalite network the stuff that holds it all together and, and and communicates and makes everything communicate with each other a little bit about the dynalite network topology the key to dynalite is daisy chain. What you're seeing here is just one device after the other, all connected by a Dynet network. Now it's orange because the Philips Dynalite cable, the Cat5 cable, is orange. It's orange because it can be seen behind the ceiling amongst all the other wiring. So we have everything daisy chained. You cannot go wrong. Our lighting, our load controllers, our panel, our sensors, daisy chain throughout. And if we can daisy chain one floor, we can simply daisy chain the other floor. And provided we come down to our computer at the end of it, connecting via a PC node, we're already well on our way to communicating with our network. Now, this is what we call trunk and spur topology. Here is a trunk, just like a tree, and a spur, just like a branch. Now this spur could be a floor, or it could be maybe an annex in a building. And then we would simply, we don't simply take the wire, strip them and twist them. No, we use things called gateways to connect our trunk and our spur. And I'll come to this in just a moment. Now, if anybody is hearing about KNX, uh, KNX has a different type of topology. It's even wider, but because it's even broader, it's even freer, it can be, it can have its own problems in terms of identifying uh, faults. So uh, in terms of Dynalite, it's daisy chained in a trunk and spur topology. Cat5 cable, what's that? 
Well, we have some limits, so I won't go into the details, but it's a cable which has certain specifications. It has to be stranded, it's sheathed. It looks a bit like this. And to make our connections to our devices, we simply strip two cables, put them together, twist them, connect them up, and we've created out of daisy chain in and out. And then if you read the installer manual, you will know everything there is to know about Cat5. But I'll come back to manuals and literature later. Network bridge, I mentioned before. We use a network bridge to do several different jobs, important little device. We can either uh, create this trunk and spur topology by fitting it at each connection. We can also use it as a repeater, so to extend our limit if we have a very long cable run. I think one kilometer is already very, very long. And as I also mentioned, we can use it to create annexes or in nice colloquial English granny flats. That's the space where you put grandma in the garden. For some reason, she might uh, there might be a fault in her flat and you don't want it to upset the rest of the lighting in the house. So it creates uh, what's called an opto isolation between one and another Dynet networks. Power supply. Well, I mentioned a power supply probably because you don't actually need one. You don't need one because each of the main load controllers in a Dynet network generates its own power onto the network. So a, a straightforward Dynet network in an office, perhaps in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a factory even, where you simply have your load controllers, perhaps some sensors, a couple of keypads, a couple of um, panels, you probably don't need a power supply. It's only when we start dealing with high drain devices, for example, um, touch pads, which might drain, say, an amp of power. Um, so there are calculations available. There is a template available for the designer to calculate when we need to include our power supply. So this is different from a lot of the competition. Uh, again, I mentioned KNX because you, you have to calculate power supplies throughout the whole network um, as a prerequisite. So this is just a simple physical, uh, physical installation example of, of a Dynet uh, installation. Here you have your, your Dali luminaires in this particular case. You need to power them. Your load controller provides the network power to your luminaires. For Dali, of course, you would need your Dali line. This is also connected back to your load controller. And then your load controller connects to the rest of your Dali light network. There's the daisy chain to each room, to each device, to each switch panel, to all the other load controllers, to all the sensors, and until you're finished. And of course, each load controller then goes out to all its different types of load, for example, halogen downlights, uh, lead luminaires, maybe DMX, RGB, etc., etc. We have different load controller styles. Um, just to show you why we have these different shapes and sizes and colors, basically we have three types. The Probably the cheapest or the most cost-effective in the nice Phillips terminology is the DIN rail version. This is the one which probably gives us the most options in our system, and we are constantly adding new versions to our, to our portfolio. We have um, the wall box style, big metal case. The benefit here is that everything is contained in the one case. We don't need to add additional housings as we would do with, dial, uh, with, with DIN rail. And we have the structured wiring version Wheeland plug and play. Uh, this is loved by countries where labour costs are particularly high. So Scandinavia loves them, UK loves them, and uh, I know from my own experience that Wheeland is very, very um, big business in the UK. Uh, plug and play. And I was told recently by a Scandinavian uh, bar that uh, you're looking typically at 30% savings just by using plug and play. So these are just the housing style. If we look at what the load controllers actually do, then we come into a, another discussion. What are we trying to control? 
do we have, for example, halogen lighting? Do we have trailing edge transformers? Do we have leading edge transformers? Do we have now older 1 to 10 volt fluorescent binning systems? Do we have lead lighting? Is it mains lead or are we running lead on low voltage transformers, which might require one of these? Are we simply switching? And switching is, of course, still the most widely used uh, uh, load. Perhaps we have DALI, for which we have very, very nice solution in Dialyte, the DALI specific solution. And perhaps we have a combination. So we don't want to spend money on all these individual load controllers. We might have, for example, a hotel room, which has a combination of fan motor, maybe a key switch, perhaps halogen lighting, probably some color changing LEDs for high spec rooms, air conditioning, and all of this can be contained in one individual housing, so different cards. And we actually have, it's not shown here, a dedicated guest room management system, which is a single box with a very, very specific job to handle one hotel room. So if you're talking to your customers, the hotels, very, very nice solution, GRMS, uh, this is something for which we have data sheets and they're available from philips.com forward slash Dynalite. I mentioned DALI. I'm not going to go into DALI as such. It's a protocol that's been with us for over 20 years. It was a um, collaboration between several manufacturers. It is a, um, a protocol in its own right. And we have three basic levels of, of DALI. And, and each level comes with its own level of complexity. We have broadcasting, which is probably the simplest, but the most labor intensive type of DALI. We then have addressing, which is the first opportunity to, to use addressing in a, a room environment. And then we have DALI Multimaster, which you've probably heard of. This is, is a fully digitally controlled, almost um, minimum wired solution, which I'll show you in the next slide. So I mentioned broadcast. This is the, let's say the basic level. You have maximum wiring to each circuit. So for example, if this was one room, you would have a different lighting circuit out to each bank of luminaires. You would then require, and the orange line here, by the way, is, uh, is a Dynet network. You would then require a separate Dynet network to link all your sensors. And eventually the sensors would respond, communicate with the controller, and then it would switch these lights on. Changes, forget it. Everything's hardwired. You don't want to get involved in changes. Far too complicated, far too expensive. Okay, Dali addressing. So you can already see a much, much cleaner room here. All our luminaires are wired to one Dali network. We have addressing. We use the commissioning tool to discover our luminaires, but we still require a separate dynet circuit to take the signals back to our load controller. And of course, we have an enumeration process. And again, uh, but again, it's much more flexible. If we want to make changes, we can do that. But probably the best solution, if you want the Dali solution, is using Multimaster. It's fully intelligent in the sense that we simply install our luminaires, we use our software to enumerate our ballasts, we can change things around, we can replace ballasts, and the biggest change here is that we then connect all our sensors into the Dali line. Our Dynet cable is nowhere to be found because we only link the load controller by daisy chaining back into our Dynet network somewhere here. So there's a complete Dali world going on here, which is luminaires, sensors, very clean, maximum uh, flexibility for changes, and um, really the best solution for DALI. What does the DALI multi-master portfolio look like? Well, very small in fact. We have our intelligent device here. This is our controller. We can operate a universe or 64 drivers connected to here. So one Dali line. In addition, we can connect a number of sensors, which I'll come back to in a moment. And we also have what we see for the first time is a dry contact. The dry contact is simply a device 
which allows other switching devices to communicate with the Dynet network. For example, a security alarm needs to send a signal onto the Dynet network, so the dry contact converts that signal into the Dynet network. You might have a mag magnetic switch. Remember, I mentioned these partition doors? Well, you need a dry contact to convert the magnetic switch input into the Dynet network. You might wish to attach a time clock to your dial jump to your Dynet network. Now, you don't have to attach a time clock. You can make many, many things happen in a Dynet network by just having your luminaires, your Dynalite controllers, some sensors, because by detecting movement, detecting sunrise, sunset, so much can happen, so much energy can be saved. But the moment you want your switches to start behaving differently at different times of the day, or you want things to happen at uh, different times of the year, for example, your, your little boy wakes up on his birthday, suddenly his bedroom changes colour. Suddenly, um, and maybe for a half an hour, things happen in his bedroom, and after half an hour they stop, and they won't start again until the same time the following year. This can be done with a time clock. So I mentioned sunrise sunset settings. By splitting the day into two, we can have the same installation behaving differently at different times of the day. And you can just imagine it's just a case of how much money do we want to spend, how much commissioning time is available, how much functionality do, do, um, functionality do we wish to have. Uh, the list is endless. Sensors. If we want to detect movement, we need a passive infrared sensor. If we want to detect light, we need a PE or a photoelectric cell. If we want a handset to operate our device remotely, we might wish to use infrared. If we have a large factory with a lot of visual blocks where, for example, passive infrared is not practical, then we will use sound. So we'll use an ultrasonic sensor. An ultrasonic sensor. We can wall mount our sensors, for example, here in a corridor. We can ceiling mount our sensors, for example, here with the 804C or the 704C. We can fit our sensors onto our Dynet network, or if we're using Dali, we can use our Dali version. It looks identical, it just goes on the Dali network. Now, again, there are rules, there are restrictions, there are, there are many questions that come in. Can I use this, can I do that? Why don't we have a high base sensor? The answer is that will come. So um, we have mounting instructions, we have application manuals to help us better understand how we handle these devices. What's so special about these sensors is that they are combination sensors. They can do movement, they can do daylight, they have, they have a reset button here. They are fully functional, multifunction sensors, and architects love them because they do everything and they're very, very small and they don't spoil ceiling. In a little bit more detail. All the settings are done through the software. We don't need to push any buttons. We don't have to push any, any dip switches. We can, but I won't go into that. So a fully multifunctional sensor, an excellent product for any installation. And I'm told that even in residential installations, the popularity of movement and daylight is just growing because people realize that so much energy can be saved by not allowing human fingers to control anything. I mentioned before, we like to show off, we like flexibility, and architects love to have choice. I'm not going to go into detail about part numbers. I'm simply going to tell you that we have different types of panels to really suit all requirements. We have standard panels. We have more traditional looking panels, cost effective panels. We can also have single, twin, or triple banks of switches. We can etch instructions or, uh, or, or icons on our switches. We have um, configurators to configure our buttons. We have options for clients to choose their own finger plate material, whether it's metal, ceramic, glass. We provide the backbone and the client provides his, um, his plate. 
But we have one particular and very nice series called Antombra, which was launched in 2000 and off the top of my head, 11. Now, Antombra, it does everything you've seen and more. Imagine a button where you can digitally configure every single button. Imagine a panel where, as you put your hand near it, the, the background of the light, the, the background of the panel lights up. It's ideal in a hotel room so that you don't have this glaring lead when you're trying to sleep. So it comes on when you go near, when you go to exit or enter. Again, we have a configurator to add simple icons, and this is, this is being improved all the time. We have different versions. We have, let's say, a simple version with, with plastic um, buttons, and we have a very nice glass version, touch version. And Tumbra also contains a thermometer sensor, which means that rather than have panels and thermometers in a room, everything can be read from the panel. So this can send out the signal. It says it's 22 degrees, and maybe the air conditioning can come on. It's all about combining the different functions. But again, I'm not going to go into any more detail. Data sheets, uh, there, are, there is a video available. There's even um, a very uh, nice animated configurator, which gives you a good idea of how this can look. I mentioned customers wanting their own look and feel. So we have all sorts of customization options available. Here is a few examples. And without wishing to scare you, we have these most complicated part numbers. They all mean something. And again, we have all the data to show you, to talk you through this. This just gives you an idea of button configurations possible. These are touch screens. We have different touch screens, the 100, the 170. What's so special about a touch screen? It simply allows you to add many pages on one screen. I can have simply um, one screen with buttons on it, but that's a very expensive way of controlling a room. Normally, you'll have page turners, takes you to next pages to allow you to drill down into different functionality. You might wish to have a background image of the space. So think about the uh, Burj Al Arab Hotel in Dubai. It would have this kind of panel on each hotel room wall. There's dedicated software, and again, an application engineer, an integrator would be the one to do the hard work. We have apps for iPad and Android. Very, very simple, basic tool called Invision Touch, which you can put onto your phone to allow you to make simple settings. The moment that you make your system connected to the Ethernet, then you can really have total control from your phone. Dynamic touch, very much dedicated to your iPad. Again, a little bit more sophisticated. We can bring up a background image. We can change the look and feel of the buttons. Very, very nice for, uh, for interior spaces. And button functionality, I mentioned at the beginning, buttons are not about on and off. These are the different type of functionality that we can have on one button. Imagine one touch, you can switch from one scene to another. Imagine if you hold your finger down on the same button, it will, it will slowly bring the lighting on. You touch it again, it will slowly bring the lighting off. Imagine that you can actually switch individual lighting circuits in the room. Or imagine one button somewhere in the house next to your bed at night time. If you hear a sound downstairs, you touch the panic button and it will switch all the lights on and it will disable all the panels in the house. And then, of course, uh, we can then run tasks, which are combination functions that allow really endless amounts of instruction to take place, um, really very much down to the limits of what the customer required. I mentioned integration. Again, these are just a few examples of how we, we, um, we get our system to talk to other networks. I mentioned AV. We have a device to talk to the AV, the video system. We have the dry contact, 
this allows us allows other switches to be included in our dynet system. We have our Ethernet gateway, etc. If you're interested in LON or KNX or BATnet, we can talk to those as well. And finally, I mentioned we have software. This is the only software slide I'll show you. But just to give you an idea, and again, this is covered in the EP training, everything that we do in our space, we can see graphically. We can access every single area. If you want to know a little bit more about pure functionality, we have an engineering specification, and this really will just give you black and white explanations of what the system is all about. It's, it's very good for your customer when you specify dialogue, uh, but it really gives you an insight. It's a bit dry reading, but it gives you an insight into what the system can do. And that, folks, brings me to the end of a an overview to Dynalight. Does anybody have any burning questions just now? Do you feel that uh, it's something which you could get to know? Okay, I'm just told, I've just been told by the organizer that you couldn't hear the last three slides. So this takes me to a very brief one slide overview of the Envision project commissioning software. This really is a superb software. It allows you to access every space in your design. It allows you to, to create the presets. It allows you to experiment, to test, um, and monitor, uh, and probably takes, I would say, one day of an EP course to learn, to really get to know what Dynalight can do. And I would recommend, if you have the opportunity to attend an EP course, please do this. If you want to know more, I suggest you go to phillips.com forward slash Dynalight, go to the library, and don't be afraid by the sea of brochures because there are application specific brochures as well as technical brochures. Uh, I would recommend this one, Dynalight System Explained, relatively short and gives you a good overview of key features of the Dynalight system. On the other end of the spectrum, we have the Dynalight engineering specification. Why do I recommend this? because it's the kind of document that specifiers will want to see. It really explains in detail what function functionalities you can expect from Dynalight. So again, this is found in the forward slash Dynalight um, site. And that takes me to the end of this brief overview. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm very happy to um, take them now. If you wish to email me with any questions, if you wish to, um, yeah, if you have any, any anything at all that you want to know, give me feedback. Was it clear? Did you learn something? 
close your eyes. Okay, I think uh, Anna would like to say a few words. Could we please give the microphone to Anna? Hello? Hello, Anna. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. It's okay. <laughs> That's funny because I think so. we were muted and I tried to say something and I thought we couldn't hear it. <laughs> And I just uh, wanted to find out from Wojtek Mazurek, who is also online, he also, what is the level of knowledge in our organization currently about Dynavite? Because it was a very interesting presentation. Uh, so I would okay. really maybe hear from Wojtek what he thinks our people in our organization in Warsaw City already know about Dynavite. What is the level of knowledge? It's something they should be really trained about. Or they mostly know about all the things you have just told us. Wojtek, can you hear me? Uh, maybe Wojtek is muted as well. I'm just going to um, okay. If um, if not, then um, I will um, talk to Wojtek. And then we can uh, come back to you because I think it was, you know, very good material and presentation. And I, I think, you know, we should start also from our top management to mm -hmm. introduce everything to them. As I said, that if you come end of uh, June, we mm -hmm. should have a training also to our top management. And yeah. um, I think they should also be more aware of uh, dynamite of opportunities and innovations and everything. Yeah, um, I'm just, um, let me just see. Um, oh, yeah. You can speak. Okay, can you, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes. Oh, perfect, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I fully agree with Anna uh, that we, we should spread our, our thing. Our our team, our sales team, this knowledge, this basic knowledge to, to give them the idea how to convince the client to the system. Mm -hmm. That's to let's say act in uh, as as we can see as we can observe that in such a cases they mm -hmm. they ask our our designer specifier to prepare any kind of the presentation and share this presentation with the client. So. Yeah. Of course, this is the limitation, the time limitation, capacity, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course, if we have a situation that the client has a very specific technical questions, subject to be to be covered, to be uh, uh, answered, in such a cases we can involve the the engineers, the the, the people who has uh, a wider knowledge in this, in this area, but when we would like to present, convince the client, I think it's a good idea that we have a tools or, or generate uh, any, any kind of a training to prepare them for, for such a, such a uh, presentation cases. Uh, so, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Um, in reaction to that, uh, again, just to be clear, when we talk about level of knowledge, um, obviously I discussed with Anna a little bit about um, starting points because um, 
I know that um, my commercial colleagues here are working on some content which I want to share uh, in Warsaw in late June. But of course, that starting point will be very much the, the commercial approach, the features, the benefits, the um, and, and when you talk about um, support, are you talking about really people understanding the system from a starting point to have the confidence to speak to their clients, or is there already a, a, a knowledge level which they need to improve? Uh, well, I, I, I'm thinking about the situation that if they have a visit, if they have a customer visit, and if they uh, convince the, the general, the LED, for example, LED solution, well, I'm coming from Philips, mm -hmm. if uh, the client uh, generally has any question related to the uh, control, related to the dyno light, they shouldn't uh, act as they afraid to touch sure. this this sure. this matter. Yeah. They should have the ability to to answer very basic, very very say niche. I mean, typical um, uh, simple question yeah. uh, related to the uh, uh, functionality, flexibility, comfort, etc. For what was touched during this this uh, workshop or this, this webinar by you. Mm -hmm. So. We should have a, a, a ability to to give the, to the client. I mean, the same during the same customer, the very basic information. Not to act in, in such a way that okay, we'll prepare any kind of a presentation. Someone will call you from our sales office, yeah. or yeah. we will send you some information via mail, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm I'm talking about such a situation. Not of course. I, I don't want to create the, the situation that the, 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 let's say uh, uh, the feeling that each hour can has the ability to specify if the uh, technical information related to the customer customer questions. But we should have a let's say capacity to to react immediately on the very basic very very standard question related to the uh, control system. And tell me, in, in your day-to-day -day work, do you think that clear um, case studies will help, or are case studies just another tool? I mean, obviously, I realise that you know people do need to have, at some point, you need to have a a basic familiar familiarity with with the system and what it can do. And there are, for example, the Dynalight system explained will give you some of those some of those one-line bits of knowledge. I mean, a customer says, "I need to save energy." The customer says, "I want, I want some nice panels on the wall. What do you have for me? And and can I make this one um, turn my whole house off in one button, for example? You know, you can only really get to know this by just re just, just taking a few look at look at look at some of these documents. But equally, I think application specific case study case studies would would give you that confidence." No, I, I can not hear you. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh. I fully, I fully, I fully agree with you. Yes. Case study. Any, any, any. I mean, materials which could let's say, build on their minds that it's it's not the, any, how to say, magic. Uh, I mean, point. Yes. Uh, and and destroy any 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 barriers in their minds that okay, I can answer. I can explain very simple. Yeah. I can give the I can give the idea what we would do with the yeah. controls. Okay, mm -hmm. so so I, I probably it's it's not not so 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 nice sentence, but I would like to destroy the the situation that they afraid to touch yeah. discussion. I mean, generally the, the the share the information related to the controls. Okay, well, I call it, I call it mystery. I think people are there is a mystery about controls which we need to remove. Yes, yes, definitely, and and thanks to this, we can we can achieve, of course, more 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 let's say business, more more uh, let's say quickly convince the client, so so more 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 money coming to us, more orders, etc. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. we we create the the situation that we will do the step forward from the I mean products to the solution, which is which is crucial for us. Yeah. I totally agree. 
because the, the sad thing is that that we, we spend a lot of time talking about the lighting installation, the, light, the lighting solution, um, and, and very often the client just wants the thing to work um, to, to, to work um, in an automated way, for example. And I can tell you that in most cases, if you simply say, I want my lights to go on and off because somebody walks in and go off and everything to switch off uh, in the evening, it's something, it's, this is bread and butter functionality for Dynalight. Yes, yes, exactly. And in some cases, they offer very, very modern, very um, new uh, solution on uh, the uh, luminaries, but they yeah. afraid to touch to offer something else to this because they afraid how to explain, how to give the clear answer to to, to client, how to I mean which part of from from the control uh, uh, portfolio should I choose, how mm -hmm. to install. How to convince the installer that it's not the um, any any let's say rocket science to 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 to, to prepare to, to to commission this? Yeah, indeed, indeed. Because you know, I think many of your basic dial light installations will be not rocket science. Obviously, things get complicated um, in some projects, and of course, we need expert knowledge. That's why we have application engineers. Um, and, and, and I think gathering, having the confidence to gather your customer requirements and to have the confidence to say, I think I've got a solution for you, is already the first step. Yeah, uh, if I could propose something, uh, probably you agree with me, you could, you could have the uh, ability to organize any, any offline, uh, I mean, uh, uh, meeting call and define step by step what we to do in, in coming weeks, months, to 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 let's say to prepare ourselves to to, to this work, to this, this development, and also um, based on this, we can communicate to our camps that okay, we can prepare, we can create any kind of you know, let's say level of knowledge um, uh, regarding the controls, and give them uh, ability to to participate in such a program or, or I don't know training. Whatever we can, we can, can I ask one last question um, based on what you've heard in this one hour? Um, where would you like to take it from here? I mean, do you think did this give did this give any demystification, or or did it kind of confirm that we have this big ugly animal waiting to catch everybody out? I think this 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 uh, the, the content is I mean according to my knowledge because uh, I had the opportunity to to, to 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 take a part of the Kenny training in my previous uh clients so so for me this is not a big problem of course. But I think if we can add to this um, program, to this content some some Case study some some typical solution. I mean, how to react on the very simple question concerning the dimming, concerning the uh, any scene, uh, how to how to solve such a question or, or react on, on, on such a needs. Okay, because if I if I if I hear that requirement, then I'm immediately thinking about the commissioning software training that we do, because I, I realise that is immediately jumping into a software training, but it does give you an insight into what the system is all about. So um, from here, for example, we have a system design course, which is all about how to interpret a drawing and convert that into a, a Dynalite proposition based on the requirements. But if you really want to understand um, how you set up these presets, actually make them come to life, yeah, we have a we have a, a two day course called EP one and EP two to do that. Um, one last comment. I know that um, um, Franco Grossa, uh, together with uh, Lorenzo Ferri, um, they're working on material currently uh, commercial material uh, related to uh, global systems, and I'm hoping that they will be collaborating um, with Robert Kawaki on this because I'll come over to Warsaw at the end of June and hopefully we'll have some material which is which is even more up to date, even more case study based, which we can use as reference material. OK, 
can you still? Can you still hear me? Oh, no, 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 something happened. Oh dear. Oh, no, no, it's, it's okay. I can oh, no, it's okay. Okay, so if, if I read you, that might case, I think um, you also need to look locally to see what your needs are. But I know I've also already asked Franca Grosser, who's working on these commercial materials, to align with uh, Robert Kawaki and to make sure that the materials are what, um, what needs to be seen in the region. Okay, great. So, so let's have a uh, let's have a discussion. Look, I'll I'll, 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 I'll ask you all that, um, if if needed during this this conversation. This this uh, go on, okay. and and we will see we will see where we are and what we should. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for yeah. the information. Thanks. Um, if, if nobody else has any questions, then I would say thanks very much for your attention. I, I hope that you are taking away something from this uh, from this hour, and that you feel maybe a little bit more um, um, informed about Dynalight. There is no mystery. It is a system which does what your client wants to do. And if we really get down to complex detail, then there are, there are application engineers that can help us. But basically. It's a matter of just simply looking at your your load requirements and applying the various devices that we have and ensure ensuring that you you build up your your shopping list to do that and of course come along to um, envision project um, commissioning to help um, take that further but okay that's to be discussed So that ends this webinar and thanks again.